All right, we got Stephen M. Smith from Touchdown Alabama on the line. Please join him for his show weekday mornings, 2 to 4 Central Time on Fox 97.9. It is called The Way It Is. All right. We talked a few sleepers, Stephen, before we started to record, and you've got an interesting theory concerning one from the ACC that could slip in the back door. I think Virginia Tech has a shot at this. Virginia Tech, they're at number eight. I want to say eight or nine in the playoff rankings right now. They will need some help. But if Virginia Tech can beat Miami, they are – I think Virginia Tech right now is minus two in the point spread to beat Miami this weekend in Miami. So if Virginia Tech can beat Miami, they win out the remainder of its regular season schedule, Clemson and beats Clemson in the ACC title game. I think Virginia Tech can backdoor its way in to the college football playoff at that number four seed. Provided they'll they'll need some help. They'll need one to two teams to lose, one to two, preferably two. But I feel like they beat Miami. They went out the remainder of the schedule. They handled Clemson in a rematch. And then they find a way to get that fourth spot. Yeah, we already know what the SEC's golden uh, scenario is, and that's for Alabama and Georgia to make it to the conference championship game, both unscathed, then to play a classic game in which – Really, either one barely loses and still makes the top four. And the SEC, for the first time in the short history of this college football playoff, gets two teams in. Uh, you mentioned the Auburn scenario that could be the best chance for any two loss team. I in the mean, it, it to make would it be in. Ca- it would be lottery cash pick money. That's what that would be. And uh, for Auburn fans right now, they're thinking we're at a point in the season where. We could possibly have our cake and eat it too. You've got Georgia and Alabama. They both have to come to Jordan Hare this season. And uh, if Auburn can somehow beat both of those teams in the regular season and then beat Georgia in the SEC championship game, now you're looking at a two-loss to Auburn with a case. They will have spoiled the opportunity for their rivals and created a case for themselves. And I understand this is not the BCS era anymore. We do not have the Harrison poll and all of these polls. But I go back to 2007, when that two-lost LSU team under Les Miles found a way to beat the system. To this day, I don't see how they did it. But the two-lost LSU, they found a way to hustle the system They got in, played for the national championship, beat Ohio State. So it would be of epic proportion for Auburn to pull this. But when you got Georgia and Alabama at home and Jordan Hare, if they should maneuver this and then beat Georgia again in the SEC title game, Auburn would have a very interesting case. So, Stephen, we've got, uh, I don't know how many people watching us here. It's actually quite a few because I actually forgot to put on the private setting, which I typically do because I go back and edit the show into segments, but we put it on the public setting. So we've got quite a few people watching us right now, and that's okay. Uh, Welcome to Mark Rogers TV and subscribe to my YouTube channel for the best in college football coverage. If you have yet to do so, Stephen and I get together every Wednesday night to talk Tide. I distinctly remember 2007, and that was the respect given to the SEC. That was the respect given to that particular LSU team and the schedule it played, and also understanding that a loss is a loss, but at the same time, it's one thing to lose in regulation. It's another thing to lose two overtime games, and that's what happened to LSU. So the argument was made that nobody beat them in regulation. Also, The last two regular season weeks of that season were crazy. So the team that actually finished number one in the country and lost to LSU in the BCS championship game that year was Ohio State. Ohio State walked off the field against Michigan. Season complete, having done what it could do, but it lost as the number one team the week before against Illinois and dropped to seven in the polls. They walked up the field against Michigan as the number seven team in the country and then just saw the dominoes fall. Missouri, Oklahoma, West Virginia, on down the line. I forget who else was involved at that point. Just lose, 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 lose. And then 
you 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 uh, open your eyes a couple of weeks later, and there was no Big Ten championship game at the time. It was just the SEC and the Big Twelve and the ACC, which was out of it. And all of a sudden, you open your eyes uh, after the conference championship games, and you've got Ohio State one. LSU two and weeks earlier after having finished the season, they're number seven. It was it was a crazy, crazy time. Yeah. That was pandemonium. It was also that- West Virginia was in play uh, as well, and they lost to a mediocre pit team in like a 13 to 9 game. Uh, oh, I remember big- that. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's crazy. The the scenarios are interesting. Uh, I will if I've get it chance over the next few days we'll look at each conference and and select the best case scenario which we just covered with the sec it's georgia alabama both making it uh after a classic sec championship game uh, as undefeated teams and the worst case scenario so auburn has the best and clearest path the toughest path but it's the clearest for a two loss team but that could also come back to bite the sec if they make it through and let's say Ohio State, Clemson, Notre Dame, and a Big 12 champion with one loss, let's say Oklahoma, since they're already sitting at number five, if they all hold serve, maybe they shut out the SEC but because you've got four one-loss teams out there. That's possible. That is. And, whoo, man. That's why, you, that's why you're kind of hoping Auburn doesn't pull it, but knowing Auburn – they're trying to spoil everything right now. Auburn is trying to spoil everything right now. The only other two lost teams I can imagine by any shot would be able to play themselves into it would be NC State winning the big the uh, ACC championship game. They beat Clemson on the way and also Miami. And then out west, USC's got the most impressive schedule in the Pac-12, but with two losses in the Pac-12 apparently down, they're in not a good position, but the Pac-12 is not in a good position because their best team with the best schedule is USC, but they've got two losses. So they've got Washington in particular with the one loss, but they played a horrendous out-of-conference schedule. So not looking good for the Pac-12 right now. The Big 12 is kind of on the fence because they need the right teams to win. And the best case scenario for the Big 12 is just Oklahoma just win on out. You're number five, win the rest of your games, win the Big 12 championship, prove that you are by far the best team in this league, and then you've got the, the way into the college football playoff most likely. Uh, now, now, how much pressure really right now is this putting on Lincoln Riley? Because battle of the Bentham this weekend, you got Baker Mayfield, but – Mason Rudolph, Mason Rudolph can really throw the football. This is going to be a very intense game. So when you look at a guy like Lincoln Riley, you lost to Iowa State, which we're finally we're starting to figure out now, the team. But you're playing this week against Oklahoma State. How much is on Lincoln Riley right now? Iowa State has shown us that uh, even in – even in its losses and losing to Texas by 10 points, a Texas team that took USC to overtime and has played extremely well against the likes of Oklahoma. And then Iowa State's other loss to Iowa, double overtime. Iowa turns around and they play Penn State to the final play of the game. So Iowa State is no joke. Uh, it's an amazing story that Matt Campbell has put together uh, with a second string quarterback. 